Hey guys, so I recently placed my first order from Shop Miss A or Shop Missa. I'm not exactly sure how you pronounce it. So if you're curious to see what I purchased and how they apply, then just keep watching. All right, so it came in this bag. It says Miss A, shopmissa.com, hashtag just have fun. So that's what we're gonna do today. So let me take off what I have on my face, which is just a little bit of like a BB cream, I believe from Sephora. And excuse the hair, we were out at the state park this morning and I just I just kind of wanted to play with some makeup while the kids were napping, so bear with me. Okay, so first off, let me tell you what I spent on all of these products total. I want to say it was around like $18 for 16 items, $18 to $21 for 16 items. So let's dive right in so the first thing that I have is the wonder blender from AOA studio it looks like this it's a submerged sponge and water squeeze out excess dab into makeup and apply it looks a lot like the real technique sponge so here's the real technique sponge and here is the AOA studio sponge very very similar it looks like it's a little bit smaller a little bit shorter so I'm gonna go dampen this and I'll be right back Okay, so it got significantly larger. Um, I think it was like about this big. So much larger, but I'm not complaining. It has a nice like squishy feel similar to the other beauty sponges that I like. So this is good so far. Um, first off, we have two foundations. I have an Amuse Flawless Liquid Foundation and I have an Amuse Matte Finish Foundation. So I'm gonna swatch these and see which one is a closer match to my skin tone. Clearly, neither of them are the right shade, but I'm gonna have to go with the Flawless one. All right, so let's try it. And I can't tell if the sponge is soaking up the product or if this foundation just doesn't have much coverage because I'm having a very hard time covering anything. Okay, so this is the side with the foundation applied and this is the side without. It's not really covering a lot. It looks probably better in the studio lighting than it does in person. Let's try to even out the other side here. Okay, so right off the bat, I can tell you I don't really like this foundation. Um, it's settling into dry areas. It's not sitting well. Like you can kind of see, it's like gathering on the sides of my nose funny. It's just gathering here funny. It's not covering. It's just, it looks very uneven and splotchy on my face. So I'm not a fan of this. The sponge, however, feels nice. We'll see how it holds up after a couple of washes. Next up, we have a corrector cream in pink because I have the blue under eye circles, so I thought that getting a corrector cream would be a good thing to try. Looks like this. Ooh, feels very creamy and light. That's good. I didn't want it to be like an overpowering pink. So let me try the other side of this sponge. Seems a bit on the waxy side. Okay, I definitely see the pink. I'm feeling more like waxy slip than actual concealer. So right now it's a pass, it looks very greasy. Can you see, very greasy. So we'll see, I'm gonna take that lighter shade of foundation and try to use this one as a concealer. Why didn't I get a concealer? That's what I wanna know. I don't think they had my shade when I was looking. Um, a greasy mess. Okay, so did either of those really conceal or brighten anything in my under eye area? I'm gonna go with 
No, they did not. <laughs> All right, we are striking out so far. Next, we have a perfect setting powder in soft light, and we have a pressed powder, a new matte powder. This is the brand Santier, and this is AOA. So we'll try this under the eyes and this on the face. Okay, so the AOA Studio Perfect Setting Powder looks like this before I open it. This is what the powder looks like. Watch me dump it all over myself. Ooh, that looks like a nice color and it feels silky smooth. That might actually work. It may have a hint of sheen, we'll find out. It looks like it has a little bit of iridescence to it on my arm. The cap's not really big enough, so I'm gonna go into my with my under eye setting brush from e.l.f. It's a highlighter brush. Just kind of press it in here. So far, I'm liking this under eye setting powder. Um, it doesn't look like it's making it darker, which is a plus. I've been looking for an under eye brightening powder. So, so far this is good. Um, my sponge was just a little too big to use with this particular packaging, just be sidewise, size-wise, but it did a fine job setting. We'll check if it has flashback in a minute. But so far, this is decent. Now let's check out the Santier Matte Powder, and it comes with a little sponge on the back. I generally don't like to apply powder with a sponge because I get too much, but it comes in like a package similar to the Rimmel Stay Matte, just a little plastic lid and a pressed powder. Very smooth. Okay, just a little bit deeper than the loose one. Very smooth, lots of kick up though. Okay, so something is turning my face orange. Not sure if you can see, but right here I've got like a patch of orange, orange, orange. I didn't see it until I added this powder. So I'm wondering if this powder is actually, this powder combined with the foundation is giving me this like orangey face look right now. So I'm not loving that. It's looking very patchy. Very cakey here. Here it's emphasizing texture on my chin, cake between the eyebrows. The foundation must not have just blended out because there's a thick line of foundation right here, right here. It's a hot mess right now. The show must go on, right? We have more products to try. Next up, we have two blush palettes. We have the triple blush palette from Starry and we have the Dusty Rose Blush from Amuse, which looks really pretty. Okay, so the rose blush slides out, which is kind of clever. On the back, it has a mirror and a brush. That's clever packaging, I have to say. And then the Starry Palette has like one of these little cheapo brushes in it, which you can't use for blush. And then three, and then three palettes all with heart imprints on them. They look pigmented. One, Okay, they are surprisingly pigmented. And then this beautiful Amuse Cosmetic Dusty Rose Blush, which reminds me a lot of like the Milani, is very, very soft. And here is the swatch for that one. So we've got bright pink, red, kind of rose, and more of like a dusty neutral, bl neutral blush. First off, let's try this beautiful dusty blush. It's a nice color. I mean, what it's applying on top of is already a mess, so you can't expect <laughs> you can't expect a miracle when you already have a bad base that you're working with. So this one's nice. I would probably continue to use this one. 
Now let's try the rosy one and see how that looks. That's not bad. These blushes aren't bad actually. I would probably buy more of these. This is really soft, really pretty. All right, next we have a highlight. This is from AOA Studio. It's the Wonder Baked Highlighter. It's in the shade Snap. It looks like this. It looks almost like a cross between the Essence Pure Nude Highlighter, the original, and a Becca Opal Flashes Jade. It looks like it has just a hint of green in it. Very dry, very, very dry. Definitely a baked highlighter. And where can I put you? Right here. That actually doesn't look green once it's out of the pan, so let's grab a brush, dig in a little, and go. Can you see that? Let's try doing some setting spray and see what happens. Not that I want to lock this makeup in for the entire day. Well, that highlight's pretty. It's not what I thought it would be. Like I said, I thought it would be a greenish gold. Might be a little too dark for me to use on the cupid's bow. It looks a little dark for my skin tone, but on the cheeks, it looks fine. Okay, I don't have a bronzer from Shop Miss A, so let me hop off bronze and I'll be right back. Okay, next up we have some brow products. So we have an AOA Studio E119 Brow Spoolie. We have an AOA Studio Sculpting Brow Pencil and an AOA Studio Go Brow Gel. All right, let's check out this pencil. It's in the shade Taupe Top. How do you say that? It has the triangle point on the one side and a spoolie on the other. It doesn't look like I needed it. doesn't look like I needed this, but I wanted this for the future. I was looking for a good spoolie brush for my collection. Here's the color of the brush. It looks a little on the yellow side, but that'll work for me. That looks pretty natural for me, actually. Okay, so that's the brow pencil. Now let's try the Taupe Go Brow Gel. Little tiny brush over here. That was easy and fast. All right, let's try the other eye. So done, not done. All right, no complaints there. Fast and easy. Next, we have a cream shadow. This is the Starry Prism Cream Eyeshadow in the shade. It says item number SC11. There isn't a name. So this is what it looks like right here before it's rubbed down. It's a really pretty brown with like silver glitter in it. It looks really beautiful. Okay, I'm not mad about that. That's pretty. And while I don't have any mascara, I do have some Kara eyelashes, 100% human hair. I don't know, I don't have any glue. Let's just plop them on and see how they look. These are definitely gonna be long. Let me go grab some lash glue and I'll be right back. Okay guys, while I wait for this coat of mascara to dry, why don't we try out one of the lip products? So I have two lip products 
from this brand. I have Amuse Cosmetics Matte Lipstick in the shade Dawn. Looks like this. And then I have the Amuse Cosmetics Lipstick in Mermaid. This is what the packaging looks like. It's really cool. It's got like a black diamond pattern on the cap. And this one's just gold. It reminds me of like a Milani packaging. All right, so here's Mermaid. Looks like a nice dusty pink color and Dawn looks more like a brown and this is a much drier formula than this one so I'm gonna go with this one all right so mermaid it is mm, very soft but smells like crayons Very soft, very creamy, very crayon-esque. Mm -mm. Okay, so mascara should be dry by now. Now I'm using a little of my Velour Lash Glue, and we will start with the lashes. They do feel very light. They're very, very dramatic. They're more dramatic than I normally wear, but they do feel feather light on my eyes. They are not, they're also not sticking. Well, they're not sticking at all. <laughs> so perhaps they just don't stick to this shiny shadow on my eyes. I'm not sure they're not sticking at all. They're not even feeling sticky. Okay, so very dramatic eyelashes. <laughs> Like I said, they're very, very soft. So if you're looking for soft lashes, you may like these. They're really, really soft. Um, not sticking. So I'm just not having luck with them today. They did have other styles too. So if you want super soft lashes that look real, I would give these a try for a dollar. I mean, I think they were a dollar. You can't really beat that. They're really, really soft. Like I said, I, ha I can't stress it enough. I've tried so many lashes that feel plasticky and hard and rough. These are soft. So if you're looking for some lashes that mimic the look of real lashes, I would try these. Um, that's it for my Shop Miss A video. I went by much more quickly than I expected. Um, I don't like how my makeup turned out today. So let me know if you guys have tried anything from Shop Miss A, if it was a flop or if it was a success, I would love to hear. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, and as always, I will see you in my next video. Bye, guys.